For the first time in four bitter years, Paris indulges in an almost forgotten emotion, the experience of happiness. The city of light and gaiety has been rid of its long term of darkness. Long live Paris. D-Day, the North African campaign, the liberation of Paris, all came within the space of 18 months or so. Do you recall thinking then that uh, at last the end was over? Yes, I could feel that things were on the up and up, you know. And then it got to the last day of the war, which was a terrible fizzle, because we waited and waited and waited and waited, and nobody quite knew whether the war was over or not, because the message didn't arrive, or nobody was quite certain, and we waited about all that day. It was, um, it was awful. Britons, impatient for the official signal to celebrate, jumped the starting gun on Monday night when notice of capitulation waited upon Whitehall, Washington, and Moscow. Well, they also were, you know, waiting to kind of tear down the blackout and burn it. We weren't quite certain whether to do it. And um, it was only uh, when it was announced that people could actually say hooray, and that was when it all came to life at Buckingham Palace. Six long years, an all-embracing jubilation rings out in the victory peal from St. Paul. We may allow ourselves a brief period of rejoicing. Today is victory in Europe day. The funny thing was, you know, I know there was a picture there of a man tottering along waving a flag, but we never saw anybody drunk. That's quite extraordinary. Wasn't it? That's, uh, for one thing, because there was very little liquor. And um, at the end of the war. Perhaps they were drunk with emotion. Well, everybody was drunk with happiness, quite right. Had there been times prior to that when, when you wondered if peace would ever come, if the, if the German army might actually one day march on the streets of London? Had it occurred to you? Oh, no. Mind you, he got awfully close when he got, in 1940, when he got to Holland. But then, um, mercifully, he was deflected. It was never talked about? Never. No. no. Which British characteristics pulled us through, do you think? Just grit. Grin and bear it and get on with it. It, it was a very odd thing that there, was, there weren't any politics, you see, in the years I was brought up. Because there was a national government and everybody was siphoning their, their um, energy. energies into beating Hitler. Well, Hitler was at the end of the tunnel and, and Beating Hitler was what we were all trying to do. It was this true grit that pulled them through. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, people went off and made munitions and, you know, weren't going to be beaten. We all pulled in the same direction yes. and succeeded. Yes. Do you think the youth of today can comprehend what their forefathers went through? No, I don't think one ever can. I remember being told about the First World War when I was quite a small girl. And it meant nothing to one at all. And it wasn't until one was in the war that it was suddenly it made sense what it was like to be bombed. So was it a fairly normal life, do you think, growing up during the war? No, I don't think so. Because there was all this... Um, one grew up pretty quickly, you know. A lot of people got killed that one knew. And, and as I say, everything was so fraught, you know. And everything was... Uh, loud and black and gloomy and that's why of course the, the this v day was sort of wonderful sort of uh, you know sunburst of glory thank you ma'am very much indeed for your time not at all thank it's you lovely talking about it Sports Night is coming up next, ahead of One Network News Late Edition. It seems the Sharks are waiting at every turn, ready to bungle a job, stretch a deal, or perfect a new one.